I would say yes I would say that it is offensive to me because only because um, again my my mom is is Asian right. and this is the person that I came from mm -hmm. so by someone forcing me to pick one race over the other is offensive to me Hello, 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 Kincaid viewers, and welcome to another episode of the Kincaid Mix. And today we have another special guest. Everyone say hello to Elle. I met Elle recently through a friend, and we started to speak about the topic of race, and I learned that he's multiracial, and I was like, why don't you come onto the show? And thankfully, he agreed. So, yeah, so of course we got to start off with the first obvious question. Elle, what are you mixed with? I am mixed with uh, African American and my mom is uh, is Asian. Right. So, yeah. right. Great mix. You see, right? <laughs> I learned also that Elle grew up in DC. So Elle, let's talk about growing up in DC as a multiracial yes. person. So uh, DC is uh, a whole mixing pot. I, I loved my city. I love my city. Um, growing up in DC, it's a very transient city, so there's a lot of different uh, ethnicities, backgrounds there. From a personal standpoint, um, I grew up with, uh, on my dad's side obviously, the African American side, I grew up with a lot of my family and my relatives always making me or pressuring me to pick one side over the other. There's always been the conversation about the uh, one drop rule where if you have any parts of African American in you, then you're black. Um, so it's all it's been challenging for me growing up and trying to self-identify. Yeah. So yeah, let's talk a little bit more about some of these experiences that you might have faced growing up as a multiracial. Are there is there any experience that you remember the most growing up in DC? Yeah, I, I'm growing up with around my my family, my cousins, and they would just always make me feel like I had to pick uh, one side over the other. They would always make me self-identify as black because I was mixed with black and it was the more dominant gene is what I was told. Um, but then I always felt that I was kind of negating one side of me by doing that. Um, so would you say that if somebody tells you that you are black, you take offense to that? I would say, yes, I would say that it is offensive to me because only because, um, again, my, my mom is, is Asian and right. this is the person that I came from. Mm -hmm. So by someone forcing me to pick one race over the other is offensive to me. So I usually will correct a person by just telling them that I'm a mixed person or I'm multiracial. Right. So you look at mixed as being separate from the other two races instead of saying like mixed will like the color a color palette, the color gray is the equivalent of mix and black and white Correct. makes up gray. But right, you look yeah. at it in the way that, well, you are a product of something that is separate from black and Yes, Asian. yes. So I embrace both sides of me. I embrace my African-American side. I embrace my Asian side. Um, and so together, that's why I'm, I'm mixed. I'm multiracial because there's two cultures that make, make me. Right. Um, so usually I will correct a person by letting them know if they're trying to make me self-identify to my Asian side or to my African-American side, I'll let them know that I, I personally would like to identify as a multiracial person. That's the box that I check when I have to self-identify. Right. And also in the same breath, you can also understand how that could offend the black community. So when a social situation sort of gets heated, how do you deal with that? In most cases, I wouldn't say that it gets heated. It's definitely a, a healthy debate. Right. Um, but I just try to, I approach it from a, a standpoint of just educating people. I don't want to argue with someone about what I am because it's more important of, of how I self-identify. Right. Um, not necessarily the world. And I, I self-identify as multiracial. So I just take it as an opportunity to educate them, to have conversations. Generally, they come from a more biased perspective. So just giving them a different outlook. Okay, so overall, what do you want people to take away from your perspective, your what you just said? Because I feel like you're coming from a good place. I don't feel like you're trying to say like, oh, black, that has nothing to do with me. Get right. away from me. I'm, I'm not black. I feel like you are truly speaking from a place that is 
unique to your experience so yeah. what do you want people to take away from that i think my biggest thing is just f from my per point of view i embrace all of me i embrace my african-american side i embrace my asian side and again as i mentioned all throughout i want to be identified as that um, i don't want to be put in a place where i have to where i'm forced to identify as Asian or I'm forced to identify as African-American. We had other conversations. Just because I don't only identify as African-American does not mean that I'm eliminating that side of me. I'm actually embracing it. I'm also embracing the African-American part of me along with the Asian side of me as well. That's what I, the point that I want for everyone to understand is that sometimes it can be offensive to make a mixed person self-identify with one race over the other. I want to embrace all of me. Beautifully stated. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, viewers, we want to thank Al for coming on the show today, but if you want to connect more with Al, you can follow him on Instagram. His Instagram is at Lover's Edge. That is L-O-V-E-R-S-E-D-G-E. -E -E. Again, L. Thank you for coming on the show. Yes, thank you for having me. Thank you.